Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. In this week's episode, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different from what I usually talk about. This week, I'm gonna be talking about my time working on the Trace Gas Orbiter Mission, or TGO for short. So let's start. What is Trace Gas Orbiter? Well, ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter is a relay satellite orbiting around the planet Mars. It's been there since 2016 and actually it traveled there with a companion known as ExoMars Schiaparelli, which at the time was supposed to be testing out landing technology in preparation for a future mission, ExoMars Rosalind Franklin Rover. And actually that mission is going to be launching later this year. Unfortunately, Schiaparelli crash landed on Mars' surface, and this was due to a parachute failure. But we're not going to be talking about that today, so let's move back on to TGO. When the rover arrives on Mars, it will not have big enough antennas on board to uh, beam back all of the information that it's found. And neither will it be able to receive any signals such as operation commands from Earth. So TGO was designed to be a relay satellite to relay signals back and forth between the rover and Earth, just like the satellites do for us on Earth. It orbits Mars once every two hours, and TGO originally wasn't planned to do any science, but when the scientists found out that there was room for it, they decided to stick four science instruments on board. This includes NOMAD, ACS, Cassis, and FRIEND. So what exactly did I do on Trace Gas Orbiter? Even though I am a scientist, I actually wasn't involved in any of the science of the mission. Instead, I was involved in operations, and specifically I joined the Uplink team as a shadow mission planner. TGO has a team responsible for downlink, the downloading of data from the spacecraft, and a team responsible for uplink, which is the uploading of data to the spacecraft. It might seem very surprising that you have to have a whole team of people doing that. In fact, in the uplink team alone, there were seven of us. It turns out that this job is really, really difficult to do. TGO is an ESA mission and ESA only have a handful of space antenna. Only three of these are deep space antenna that can actually communicate with TGO. And they can only communicate with TGO at certain times of the day due to the rotation of the Earth and the location of TGO in its orbit. I'll put a link down below to a website where you can see the live details of these communications. TGO also gets some help from NASA's antennae, and this is in return for relay time for their own rovers. So what exactly does a mission planner do? Well, um, as a mission planner, my role was to schedule the science and the upload and download times for the satellite. And this turns out, like I said, to be very, very difficult. In our team, different pairs of people uh, would run on rotation either the long-term plan, LTP, which is six months planning before execution on the satellite, mid-term plan, which is MTP, starts three months before execution, and short-term plan, STP, which starts one week before execution. I specifically worked on MTP, midterm planning. I had one month to decide all of the commands that I wanted to send up to TGO, and this would be prepared two months before the commands actually got sent to the spacecraft. This involved frequent meetings with the science teams of the instruments on board, and these people were working all over the world. The instrument friend is a neutron detector. So when cosmic rays hit the surface of Mars, it can break apart the atoms and release high energy neutrons. The velocity of these neutrons will tell you how much hydrogen, or more importantly, water is present on the surface of Mars. Friend is always on and it doesn't do much, so we didn't really have to worry much about it. On the other hand, the other three instruments required much more attention. So why did the other three require much more attention? Well, there are three types of observations that the other three instruments can make. 
This is the nadir observations where you're observing directly down at the surface of Mars. Limb observations where you're just observing the edge of Mars. And solar occultations where you're observing the edge of Mars but during either a sunrise or sunset. Cassis is a camera that's designed to take stereo images of the surface of Mars. So most of the time it wants to look down, it wants to use the nadir observations. But contrary to what you might have thought about the other two instruments, their most sought after um, observation is in fact the occultation. And this is because ACS and NOMAD were built to analyze the atmosphere of Mars using the onboard spectrometers. Um, and to do this, what they do is they look at the sunlight passing through the atmosphere and the amount of a, um, absorption of the light that occurs can tell you about what molecules are present. Only one of the instruments can observe occultation at a time and there are three operating channels on each of these instruments to look at different uh, molecules. So we have to divide the time evenly, not only between the different instruments, but between the different channels as well. This kind of sucks um, because um, these observations only occur twice during a whole orbit of Mars. But overall, we try to schedule it so that the instruments all get their fair share. Um, on top of all of this, we need to be very careful of the power consumption of the satellite. We could, in principle, turn on all of the instruments. However, this would drain the power, especially if Mars is on an orbit that is very far out from the sun. We need to be very careful of data storage as well. If we don't schedule in time for um, the download of data, then it could be possible that it starts overwriting itself, and that would be very, very bad. And we also have to make sure that any observations that we put in don't put TGO in any danger. But of course, that's what mission control team are there to like tell us, right? Um, when new commands um, for new science are needed by the science teams, then uh, we would be responsible for coding them up as well. And after um, several passes back and forth between the uplink team and mission control, the schedule and the commands are finalized to send up to the spacecraft. Nevertheless, on STP, one week before the commands actually get sent to the spacecraft, small changes can still occur. So overall, I really enjoyed my time working on TGO, in particular learning all of the stuff I did about working in space operations. And I have to thank Leo Metcalf for giving me the opportunity to do so, and David Frew and Mike Ashman for taking me under their wing, as well as the rest of the Uplink and uh, Downlink team and the TGO team in general. Let me know in the comments section below what topic you want me to talk about next. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.